Now, I'm going to be reading from the public domain version of the large catechism. Go over to the second commandment. Uh, you go from the first commandment, you shall have no other gods, to now in the second commandment, here we are referring to God's name. Okay? You should not misuse the name of the Lord your God. So if you look at the second commandment and you go to pay, or, uh, paragraph 54, so this is second commandment in the public domain, uh, large catechism. And uh, if you look at paragraph 54, it says this, but the greatest abuse, this is a misuse of God's name, the greatest abuse occur, occurs in spiritual matters, which pertains to the conscience when false preachers rise up and offer their lying uh, vanities or visions of God as God's word, their own ideas, their own imagination. I mean, this is what they're doing. They're, they're thinking up these things. I mean, we know in our day, the more things change, the more they say the same. I mean, on TV, the radio, on the internet, you get these guys, these televangelists, you know, God told me in a dream last night. You know, everybody's <laughs> looking for a personal revelation, a personal extra biblical vision and sign and wonder. Like, it's just you and God, and you're the only one who has this. And then you gather people around you so that uh, only they can understand what God has. They can see what you see, because somehow you're the visionary who can cast a vision because God has chosen you personally. But all of this is just complete shenanigans. The entire scriptures are the, prof the prophets and the apostles who have the vision of God. So like Isaiah the prophet, it begins by saying the vision that Isaiah saw. I mean, just Amos the prophet, we just had this a couple of weeks ago, where Amos is there, it's, it's the, the oracle, the vision that he sees, it's the oracle that he's given, and so Amos, of course, is going to wait and see what the Lord will say. And then the Lord speaks and gives him the vision. What's the vision? The vision is always Jesus, the image of God, who God truly is and what God truly does. That God himself is the creator and God is the redeemer who comes to save us from our own sin. Okay. But all of these extra biblical visions, they want a different vision. In other words, they want a different God. They want a different word. Now, I, I have said this before, that if, if you have one of these extra biblical visions and it's contrary to the written scripture, well, then it's not the word of God. And this is why Luther will say to the Zwickau prophets, if you claim that you speak of the Holy Spirit, but it's not the word of God, he doesn't care if you swallowed the Holy Spirit feathers and all, because that's not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who inspires the prophets and the apostles, the Holy Spirit who works in their writings and their teaching, the same Holy Spirit who gives us that, that divine word, the scripture self that's God-breathed, that's inerrant, infallible. Uh, this is God's word that we can be certain and sure what God actually says. So we, get, we don't need a different word. And if some extra biblical uh, revelation, vision, says the same thing as the written scriptures, well then why do you need it? <laughs> we have got the written scriptures. There's nothing new, there's no theological development of doctrine that it changes with uh, whatever the Pope says. Okay, I mean, or whatever the local Pope at one of these big box uh, American evangelical churches says. Because I mean, basically each one of these individual Popes in these churches, these so-called non-denominational churches, are just like little papal kingdoms. I mean, that church has their own little pope set up on his own throne uh, with his own visions that he casts for you. But see, these are the false preachers. They rise up with their lying ideas and understandings of what God's word is. Um, they just, they make this stuff up. And so that's a misuse of God's name. Because God gives us his name and his name is connected with his word. Okay. I am Yahweh. I am your God. I'm the one who delivered you out of slavery and captivity in Egypt. It's the confession of who God is, and we have that in the scripture so we can be certain and sure that we hear God's voice. I mean, that's the reason why we have the written word. We have the written word, so a guy like me who's teaching you God's word, you, as the hearer, can be certain and sure that what I'm saying is God's word and not my own word. It's not my agenda. It's not my opinion but it's what the prophets were given to teach. It's what the apostles were given to proclaim. And it's always centered in the person and work of Christ. It's, it's never centered in your person and your work. But these false teachers over and over again, they take the focus off of Christ and put the focus on the Christian. It's about you and your work and what you do to make God happy, to make God merciful. I mean, that's the whole idea.
So it's these false preachers are the ones that, uh, again, in these spiritual matters, it has to do with the conscience. So these false preachers are toying with people's consciences. So they're taking a conscience that like, for instance, with this whole movement we now have in the United States here with all this, it's okay to be gay type thing. These false preachers are in the church and these, these woke pastors are in there telling their parishioners that it's okay to be gay. So to have uh, these act upon the sexual impulses unrestrained and saying that it's okay and it's not sin, you're toying with people's consciences because that conscience is alarming you and telling you that this is not right in God's sight and you know it by natural law and you know it by God's revealed will. But then when you have one of these charlatans up there teaching you that it's okay, that charlatan is now toying with your conscience. And your conscience that's being burdened because you have sin that needs a savior who removes sin, that false teacher, that prophet, so-called, is toying with your conscience and taking Jesus away from you. He is not giving Jesus his honor because Jesus comes to save you from your sins. I mean, if you don't have any sins, you don't need Jesus. So first of all, when they tell you that, oh, don't worry about your conscience, just ignore it, you're okay and keep reciting the mantra with us and then you'll know it's okay. And then you have this no need for Jesus to give you peace in your conscience. I mean, if, if, if you don't have sin, you don't need a savior. So that's toying with your conscience. The whole point of your conscience is it alarms you to tell you, you have sin and you need a savior. And then the whole message of the gospel is, you do have a savior. That's the whole point of preaching. But if you're not gonna preach the fact that we have sin that still remains in us, then you're going to have no need to preach Jesus who takes away your sin. Now, in the baptized, sin will remain, but it shall not reign over you. But the charlatans are teaching people to let sin reign over you. And like we've said before, I mean, what they're doing is they want you to identify with your sin. I mean, that's the whole idea. What's your preferred sin? Whatever your preferred sin is, I mean, that's how you can identify. You can self-identify with your sin. Well, that's what Satan wants. Satan is the accuser who accuses you of your sin, and he wants you to identify with your sin. What God does is God comes to remove the sin away from you and to give you a new identity in Christ so that in him you're a new creation and there is no condemnation. So that it's in him you have a new identity. You are new, a new man, and you're beginning to walk in new ways. And so that's where the Holy Spirit is working in the conscience, giving you a good conscience, knowing what God's will is and knowing the way we are to go. But this is the name of God. The preacher is to preach the name of Jesus. But if the preacher is not preaching the name of Jesus, he's preaching a different name or she uh, is preaching a different name. I mean, this is what's happening with a lot of these uh, seminaries and these mainline so-called Protestant uh, seminaries. I mean, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're producing uh, pagan priestesses and pra pagan priests. I mean, that's what they're doing. It's, it's a paganism. It's a different God. So when they say that they believe in the God of love, I mean, it's the God of erotic love. Yes, it's a God of love, but so did the Romans and the Greeks have the God of love and all the other pagan religions throughout the world. But you're toying with the conscience. So this is why, why it's an issue. So when Luther goes from the first commandment to the second commandment, he moves from monasticism, which is a form of idolatry, to these false preachers who are taking the name of Jesus and misusing it, abusing it, and giving a false uh, uh, name of Jesus, a false Jesus.